You want to get a drink? I don't know what you guys were thinking, but that wasn't a pickup line. It was actually the sentence that started my informal mentorship. A couple of months ago, a teacher of mine reached out with an opportunity to overcome one of my biggest fear, public speaking. We went to a cafe, grabbed a cup of our favorite drinks, and started talking. Surprisingly, the conversation went very well. There was no dead air. We all know how awkward those are. He offered to become my mentor and prepared me for an event that had me speaking in front of 700 people. I went from being very done and wanting to run away from the whole situation to actually excited about it. The more I talked to him, the more comfortable I felt. And funnily enough, I knew I was going to accept the offer before the conversation had even ended. It turned out that that was the moment when I've entered an informal mentorship, all because a cup of hot chocolate and one smooth talker. Now, look at the person beside you. Go ahead, look. Don't be shy. Say hi. Ask them your name. Give them a smile. Now back at me. Hi. Who did you meet? It might have been a friend, a parent, a teacher, a senior, a junior, the headmaster, or maybe you have just made a new friend. Would you ever offer to become their mentor? Hmm. All right. What if I tweak the question a bit? Let's say the person beside you is asking for help, and it happens to be something you're very good at. Would you lend a hand? All right, I'm seeing we're nodding. Let's take it one step further. Can you see yourself helping them for a long period of time, even possibly building a trusting relationship with them? Yeah? Then why is it that I saw such a mixed reaction early on? when I asked if you would become their mentor. Many of us know that having a mentor is beneficial, and there is loads of research out there. In fact, there was a study done by the Olivet Nasserine University back in 2019. They explored professional mentor-mentee relationships among 3,000 people. Here's what I found out. About 75% of them thinks mentors are important, just like us. But less than 40% actually had one. Why? What's stopping them? Many of the reasons led back to the perceptions and the fear around mentorship. The fear of rejection, both in asking and offering. The fear of being vulnerable and letting someone in and the fear of the word mentorship itself, which makes complete sense. Since the word mentorship is normally used in a formal and professional setting, in our minds, the word mentors immediately leads to experts, and anything less simply won't do. But is that who mentors truly are? By definition, a mentor is a person who gives a younger or less experienced person help and advice over a long period of time, especially at work and school. There is nothing in that sentence that implies, even a little, that mentors are experts. And what most people don't realize is that you can mentor anyone. The key thing here is to know enough. At the very core, a mentor needs to have enough experience enough knowledge to be able to guide and support someone who is struggling. It is a two-way street where both sides will learn something new. Now, there are two types of mentorship, formal and informal. A formal mentorship is highly structured and has a specific outcome in mind, which is why we mostly see it in business organizations. The relationship itself is more professional, and aims entirely at success. And as good as that sound, it is not accessible to everyone. 
especially not our students. Students who greatly value compatibility. Informal mentorship, for me, is a better fit. It is a personal and trusting relationship where both sides don't have to be professional at all times. It is more flexible. The mentee can have just a targeted area, not a specific goal. The aim can still be at success, but success as the big picture. Around August last year, I had the opportunity to step up. A teacher asked me to help mentor some of my juniors in becoming an MC. I remember thinking, why, why me? There are so many people out there who's better than me, who have more experience than me, and I'm no expert. Yet there are people putting their trust in me. So I told myself, hey, it's all right. It's just helping someone out. But with that mindset, everything flowed the moment I saw my team, my juniors the teachers, other organizers. It hit me that I wasn't alone. They weren't asking me to be any uh, expert. They were just asking me to share my experience. And that's it. And it showed throughout the whole process because I still made so many mistakes. But every single thing I did, from asking questions, looking at the script, to making comments and checking in on them, Every single thing I did was based on my previous experience, and that was enough. That was something my juniors didn't have and I could share. Thinking back, that, that was informal mentoring, along with so many activities I have done before, be it coaching first-time MCs, or guiding our juniors on their projects with my friends. We all have done it without even realizing it. Many of us feel that the mentee is the one to initiate the mentorship. They have to do research. They have to find the one. They have to convince that person. And that's not wrong. But what if I say more mentors can reach out? Specifically, us. Every single one of us in this room, as informal mentors, because we're already doing it without realizing it. So why not step forward and normalize informal mentoring. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge what you have. Own it. Step forward. And share what you know with others. Because sharing your experience and knowledge is one of the most beautiful things in the world. Yes, you need to give them time, attention, effort, empathy. But you gain so much more in return. Anyone can be an informal mentor if they decide to. So, look at the person beside you one last time. Ask them, go on. Hey, you wanna get a drink? And I hope you guys hit it off. <laughs>